Welcome back to Station Ears, and I've been doing some more construction here. We can see we've got our roof in, and you can see just the start of the walls here. So you'll see the difference. We've got this kind of window and this kind of window. Composite window is required to finish it, but uh, sorry, glass sheets are required to finish it, but it's a composite window. And this is a regular iron version. So you can make both kinds. Uh, this just needs the the basically the um, steel walls rather than the iron walls. Let's look for wall. Yeah, so this type of wall has the steel version. It's cheaper than the iron version, so you should probably move to it. And the same thing with all of the ceiling up here. That's all the same um, composite version. You should not finish it. Doesn't have, doesn't have any plastic sheets. If I just grab some plastic sheets, you probably haven't used them. You got given them right at the start of the game. But you can see, here we go. And uh, these will fill in quite naturally. There we go. And it looks quite nice. Uh, it looks sort of like 70s retro kind of style but uh does work so yep you your choice entirely which one you actually use i think the uh, the steel ones look kind of nice with this sort of cladding on the walls someone did say comment in the last episode that these aren't airtight that's correct that's absolutely fine i'm not going to be using them for any kind of airtight purpose um uh yeah not at all in fact so they are perfectly fine just as wall coverings so we need to make sure we have at least either these which are the windows which are airtight or uh, blocks and speaking of blocks you can see also further up here these blocks look slightly different to these. That's because these are the steel versions. And again, they're also cheaper. They take a little bit longer to make, but hey, they're cheaper. So all's good there. So yeah, our room is nearly complete here. It just needs me to finish off and uh, get some other stuff going. So what I'm also going to do while the sun is up is fit an extra battery. So I've put this iron frame in place just as a sort of placeholder. And then we're going to be able to basically place one battery on top of another. And uh, we want it to go this way, I think. Yes. Yes, that's right. It would be nice if they merged so you can stack them. But I don't know if you can actually place them any lower than that. If anyone knows, do let me know in the comments. Otherwise, uh, we're going to leave it like that. Do bear in mind that when you actually do this, however, and we just need to just... Uh, is there anything cooking in the furnace? I don't think there is. No, there isn't. Okay. So uh, we do actually want to make sure that when we connect this up, the output to these batteries are going to need to go into heavy cable. Um, basically, these can discharge a huge amount of power. And once we start stacking them up, before they get to this transformer, they can basically route a lot of power through this small cable. So I just want to make sure that, that is already upgraded. Similarly, over here, um, I now have 10 solar panels. And that's sort of about the limit. I mean, because things aren't actually um, fully, uh, fully efficient right now, it's not tracking the sun perfectly. You can probably fit on an 11th and that won't be a problem but once it goes over a certain amount it will burn so eventually you'll probably move across this heavy cable everywhere for the 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 uh, this side or you can just create separate uh, batteries if you like along each row of solar panels and then connect them all up on the output i'm not going to worry about it for now i'm just going to connect on this side and we're going to just do that via connecting it sort of this way and um let's get that straight and out here, I'm going to turn a corner, go down. And at this point, I just need to go and basically remove these, which is probably going to kill everything in the system. But that's okay. Hopefully it didn't, ah, it didn't depressurize. Good. We just want to make sure I don't kill all the plants off. And then we're just going to make sure I do that just by getting this straight. And then we will turn a corner. Ah, turn a corner, turn another corner, and everything goes back on again, at which point we can then just merge everything in with uh, a corner going upwards, I think. And then a straight piece. Why don't you give me a straight piece? Come on, straight piece. <laughs> Sometimes this game, ah, there we go. You have to back off to actually just get it to connect. So you'll see there is basically two outputs and they're both going into here. At this point, we can lose our um, lose our iron frame. And that's done, dealt with. And we can put our composite for grating back again. Hopefully, come on. You're not going to choose the floor, are you? Ah, there you go. Yep. And that's done. Okay. It looks a little bit weird with the cable sticking out, but there's not really much you can do except route it that way, maybe. But still, when you stack them up like this, that's going to be, and it just, it's just going to happen. 
uh, and I don't need to worry about that otherwise. And then on this side, we want to do pretty much the same thing. I just want to make sure uh, this acts like a second battery. Now, they don't always act purely in parallel. If I remember rightly, one discharges before another one. So you have to think about that a little bit. Um, let's just, I'm going to actually need to remove that again, aren't I? So let's just get this side sorted out. And we'll just put them directly into the inputs here. So no messing around. Straight into a straight piece. And then straight into... There you go. So that should let it charge both of them. Once this is full, it should move on to the next item, the next battery. And they can both get their U back. I think that should work. We just have to make sure, just like the other one, you turn the battery on up here, and it will start accepting charge. Unless they rebalance. I don't think they do, because they'd have to rebalance on the output side, I guess. But we'll see. That certainly has drained away from full. Maybe the battery behavior has changed, in which case it would be quite nice if that's the case. Anyway, we have two batteries, which gives us a much larger buffer. Exactly double, in fact. So then we'll just put all these away, nice and tidy. And you'll see I've removed the arc furnace from here because we just don't need it with just this queuing system that just automatically works. I've put these in. These are just another use of the wall. So if you, right, if you scroll wheel, you'll be able to choose railings. So... Uh, usually I use these for kind of things for like the ore holding area when I go mining, but I've just been putting them into lockers. Um, I did that before lockers came into the game really last time, so uh, yeah, the lockers are more than good enough for now. So yeah, that's our room pretty much, you know, the outline's finished, I'm just going to complete the walls and the ceiling, and we should be good to go. Now, it's time we got you to starting programs. So I took up the floor. And remember, we set up this uh, circuit housing last episode. You can take this circuit in and out, etc. And this is going to be a programmer, but also I think for this room, this will be just where this lives and we'll come up with cladding because the simplest possible program I could think of for all of you guys to get started with is automatic lighting. So in here, you'll see we've got nice walls, but they're white and uh, my backpack light does not really help illuminate them that much. So I printed off some lights, and if you just see here, let's just put, uh, there's a few different types, but if we go for something like a wall light angled, we can turn it around, and if we just turn that on, you'll see that, well, it doesn't really show up very well until you really, let's put in some cladding. Okay, and if I then, uh, if I then turn off my backpack light, let's just see how, how good or bad this is, so uh, turn you off. Uh, can't really tell until it's dark, of course, because it's mainly meant to be used at night time. It'd be nice if you could turn that up as far as uh, power is concerned. Anyway, that is a bright spot and it should show up on the floor once the sun goes down, and we'll see how well that is. Uh, well, well, mm, go down, go down, faster, faster. There we go. Okay, so we're clearly gonna need more than one. That's all right, but it's not amazing as far as that's concerned. So uh, let's. Why don't we just have a little bit of, of play around first? Is there anything better than that we can actually do? Let's because it's not reflecting onto the wall whatsoever. Uh, let's turn on, on the portable light. See the portable light's amazing by comparison. So uh, okay, let's take off the cladding for a second, and um, let's just put that away. And what about the other types? So if I just put in a... In fact, we need to probably remove this. Um, yep. Yeah. Let's just get you. Uh, how about wall light uh, long wide? Are you any better? A little bit. It's certainly, uh, it's certainly going onto the walls now. What do you guys think? That seems to be better than the angled one. Even though the angled one you'd expect to cast downwards, this seems to cast downwards just as well. So, yeah, and uh, of course, probably we... Well, normally I put them on the roof, but the roof we've got the uh, the, the windows, so uh, probably around about this height, I guess, during the night time, and then I don't technically need this thing anymore. But that is hugely, hugely better than this. So, yeah, any thoughts, anyone? Otherwise, I will kind of obviously redo that whenever we need to. However, manual lighting is terrible, and so is having it on all the time, because that's just wasting power. So a couple of options I can think of. One is to, first of all, take this down. 
Are you not you no power? Charge very low. Um how did I get this thing off again? No, none of you. Mm, let me just go and grab some more power. I'll switch this to a full size battery. Are you gonna work now? Ah, it's just slightly different, slightly offset to one side. That's fine. So, uh, yeah, well, it looks like we're going to go for the long and wide version. So I'm going to put it up here for now, mainly because of another reason. And we're going to get to that in a second. Uh, but I think I'm going to also just take down some more of our composite cladding just further up and this way as well. Okay, and um, plenty of it around. So it's just going to fall off the walls. And let me put that backpack back in place temporarily, just because I want to be able to see. I want you guys to be able to see as well. So, uh, yeah, so long and wide. We're going to put it all over here and over here as well. Um, pointing downwards. There we go. And I've got one spare for there, and then we don't need one for the end. So just spaced out a little bit more. Let's just put in some, um, some, uh, some well, corner cables here. Straight cable straight across, and thankfully the uh, thankfully the cabling I've already done here is the same height. Um, the the angled has a connection point on the left hand side here, but sticks down a little bit, whereas this one doesn't stick down, but others otherwise fine. So that's going to do fine there. And uh, let's just get this also wide in. So oh, not there, there. I think I'm just going to go and jetpack up for this. Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, I can put the cladding back, then we'll just see how reflected this thing is, uh, hopefully. So two, and where's the rest of the cladding gone? Some over here, maybe. And there's some on top over here. That should be everything. So one, two, and three. So how does that look? One, two, three. That looks a lot better. Yeah. And including this off. Eh, it's not too bad. Yeah. It sort of works. It'd be nice once there's ones on that side as well, but that will work as well. I'm just going to leave this on for now because I want to have these off. And we'll see why in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is put down uh, something to control these lights. And as we've done before with the solar panels, we're going to put down a batch writer. There we go. Okay. And we'll put the rest back. Now, this particular circuit you can get by with just electronics. You don't need to have a program, but it is happened to be a really trivial uh, program to write. So it's really kind of nice as far as that's concerned. So let's actually write the program. Let's just, first of all, we're going to get this batch writer to point at the IC housing. Okay, easiest way to do this. There are other ways, but yeah, easiest way to do this. The alternate way to do this is to point it at a logic memory unit, and then we control the memory unit from our housing over here. But this is just much, much easier. And then we're going to output this to our all of the uh, basically wall lights, long and wide. And we're going to output the on state and we'll do this. So uh, right now the IC housing has a state of one, which means all of these are set to on. I'm going to turn it off because that, that state's going to change in a second. And I'm just going to, need to take down just one thing there. Whoops. There we go. And then we're going to put in a couple of sensors. And this is up to you which sensors you use. Um, not telling you which way to actually do this, so it's pretty flexible. You can either use a daylight sensor, and the daylight sensor is if you wanted to, for example, have the lights come on at night time. Okay. Uh, or you can use a motion sensor. And the motion sensor, as you might imagine, uh, will activate when a player is nearby, or it will show up when a player is nearby. There you go. And as I move away, move towards it, it comes on and off. This does not. As you might imagine, it's just responding to the sun. So from that, we can then basically choose to go and program it. Now, before you start programming, go and get yourself at the electronics uh, printer 
a cartridge called a configuration cartridge. Very, 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 very handy when you come into dealing with electronics, but also circuits. Turn on your tablet, point it at anything, and you'll get all the values you can change. So for example, uh, well, the, all the values you can read as well. Here we can see from the daylight sensor, it's activate status zero. That'll be one when it's daytime. And then this one is going to be a motion sensor and activate is one right now. If I was further away, it would be zero. And you can also see prefab hash. That's basically um, something we can use later to try to dispense items. Not going to worry about it for now, but you can also see our solar angle here. And that's the same thing we're using over on the other electronics. So uh, that is uh, pretty much not yeah, there's not much else here we need to actually work, look at. We don't need to look at mode, and we don't need to look at on state for either one of those two things. So or not, at least not for this use anyway. So that's fine. We know we want to look at the activate state for either one of those things. Normally, if you wanted electronics, you'd put a logic reader down, you'd read activate, and then you'd put down a math um, pr processor or something like a math processor. And based on what you chose there with a the memory unit, perhaps, you'd basically write back to the lights, and that would work perfectly fine. Works very, very similar to the way we're doing our solar panels, but let's do things a little bit differently. First of all, what we're gonna do is set up everything on the um, circuit house, and I may have already done this, actually. Did I already do it? Yeah, no, actually, I didn't. So uh, we're gonna get to that in a second. Uh, don't worry about the text in yellow, that's just me t playing around. The thing we're actually looking for is to read a, a sensor. Because the sun isn't up, I'm going to read the motion sensor. So I'm going to set this to the motion sensor. And then this one, uh, I was going, well, let's just do it this way. Yeah. So I can choose to you know, go and connect it to a light. So this is without using a batch writer. Problem with this is that it can only read, it can only write to one thing, one particular light. So let's go and just turn the lights off again, just so that I can demonstrate this with a program. All right, so everything is off. D0, and these both are inputs and outputs. D0 is connected to a motion sensor. D1 is connected to a wall light. Okay, so let's turn on our computer. And you'll see in the left-hand side menu here, there is only the IC housing, which is this. There's only one IC housing in our entire playthrough at the moment, so no need to rename that just yet. And just to briefly show you the editor, Editors here and the help sections that you're going to want to use are these three sections. So functions, variables and slot variables. You'll only generally need either slot variables or device variables at a time and functions are, the, are by far the most useful. So first one we're going to use just to make things nice and friendly is alias. So at the top here, I'm going to type a couple of lines. So alias, uh, it says string, you'll see it here. It's basically what name you want to use this. So I'm going to use a name that I can use internal to the program. Um, so in this case, D0 is what we're going to alias. So D0 is our sensor. So sensor D0. Okay. And then I'm going to alias uh, light to D1. And if I just change that actually to motion sensor for the moment, confirm and hit export you'll see over here is what the yellow text is. See, that's changed the motion sensor. It's run out of characters, but it's changed to motion sensor. So yes, you can do that. And the sun's just come up. But I'm just going to change that back to just sensor. So those are just friendly names, and you can see them both on the actual physical circuit housing and in your program. Then what we're going to do is basically look for loading things. So we're going to load into an internal bit of memory. It's very simple to do. Here you go down for L, and there's a, another version called LS for down here if you load in slots. Slots is like, for example, over here. Uh, remember in this, this circuitry over here, we were looking for the input and output slot, and you have to have a little bit more of a setup to do that, the batch slot reader and stuff like that. Uh, same thing there. For this, we're not going to be using slots, so we don't need to worry about it. So instead, we're going to load and then into, and it says R question mark. That's the internal memory. It goes from 0 to 15, I think. Uh, so uh, R0 is the first one, of course. And then it says D question mark, and that is one of these. But because we've got an alias, we can use the alias. So I'm going to load the sensor um, into R0, but I need to load something on the sensor. In this case, that's why we looked at it with a configuration uh, chip. So we want to load the activate state into R0. 
And then what we want to do is, in this case, when activate is one for the motion sensor, I just want to basically output it again. I'm not too concerned about anything else. So I use S. So if we scroll down to S, there is uh, S, then D, again, the device, in this case, light. Okay. And then the variable to set. So the light is the on state. We want to control the on state. And then what uh, what R, what internal memory am I using? R, zero. Okay. That's fine. So let's just try that for a second. Will that actually work? Yes, it will. Because this is set to one. Uh-oh. That's not working. Because now it's not actually going reassessing things. It runs once and stops. That's not what we want to happen. So what we're going to do next is basically type in yield. All that yield does is it the, the whole computer operates on half second ticks, if you like. So if all this stuff takes, you know, a tenth of a second, yield just says, wait until the end of the next cycle before you do anything else. And then we're going to say jump and we can just do jump zero. Now, what I tend to do is something a little bit more advanced than that. I tend to uh, actually write something up here. So um, so let's just call it sense. Um, yeah, let's just call it sense. So give it a name, put a call on after it, and then you can jump down here back to sense. So uh, what we should be able, to be able to do is export. And now when I move away, it turns off again, which is cool. Now, that's not necessarily very useful right now because it's only turning one light on. So if you wanted to control multiple things and save a chip, you have five outputs. So you can just go in here and you can say, well, I'm going to set uh, S light, uh, not light actually, because I've not I've not put a um, an alias on it, but I can do D2 on R0, SD3 on R0, and it would work, work perfectly fine. I may even choose to do that, but I'm just going to demonstrate how to do it another way, just in case you want to do it that way yourself. So instead, we're going to back here, and then when you've got light as D1, I'm actually just going to ignore that entirely. Uh, I'm going to wipe that out. Uh, in fact, yeah, let's just change this to DB. Can I actually do that? I think so. DB is a special device, and it's base, basically, so it's the device itself, except now instead of on, because we're not controlling a light, we're controlling the base uh, of the um, of the the housing. Um, if you set it to on, you'll turn the housing off whenever I step away from the sensor, which will turn the circuit off, which I guess is, is one way to do it, but then it will never turn back on again uh, without you actually pressing the on button. So instead, you're going to change it to setting. So we're going to change the setting of the base to the same as R0. So if I export that again, you'll see it's one at the moment. And if I move away, it's zero, one. And then what we can do is read it down here. So I see housing, wall light, on. And now if I step towards them, all the lights come on. Great. I like it. Now it's also quite simple to set up the daylight sensor, but you need a bit of trickery for this one. So if we set this to the daylight sensor instead, this is active right now. Unfortunately, what that means is uh, basically the lights are on during the daytime. That's not what we want. So we need to reverse this. And you might think of, if you're familiar with electronics, you might think of a knot gate. Now we don't have a knot in here, nor certainly, but not not. Okay, so instead, what we're going to do, I think, if I can store, uh, let's, can we just store a zero? In fact, can I actually just do it with a number? I can do it with a number. Okay, so yeah, we well, can do it with a nor. What we actually want to do here is basically load in into R0, uh, I think. And then I'm, well, we may be able to shortcut this, but load into R1, in, uh, sorry, nor into R1. I'm not, I'm not sure if you can just self uh, if you can do R0 uh, and then the, the next operation on itself. So I'm just going to try it into no R1. And then here it says A, R question mark, num, B question mark, num. So basically it will take either a register or a number for each of these things. So I can say R0, 0. 
So if both of them are zero, it's going to turn it into a one. And if they're not both zero, it's going to turn it into a zero. And then we can turn it into uh, that. Press confirm and export and the lights come on when it's nighttime. And you can test this quite easily just by, you know, make sure that your knot is actually working. Because now if I change this back to the motion sensor, you'll see as soon as I step away, the lights go on. And as soon as I get close, the lights go off. So it's like horror house mode. Um, in our case, though, we want that to the daylight sensor. So right now, the lights will come on whenever it's nighttime, even if you're not around. Now you can play with this a little bit more and you can say they'll only come on at night time and if I'm nearby. The problem that I have with the motion sensor though is that it's just too short range. I want that thing, I mean look, I'm, I'm to one block away, still one block away. As long as I'm in the block space it's perfectly fine. So you end up having to do this by putting lots of motion sensors down and creating some sort of um, timer. Time as possible. I don't want to show it in this episode because it's it's a lot less simple than than dealing with just very very simple loading and saving like this. Even you know adding a nor in, in our first tutorial is perhaps a little bit much. Hopefully this all makes sense to you guys. If it doesn't, please 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 put comments down below. Um, the in-game help is quite good. Um, it certainly wasn't this good when I last played it, and I, in fact I haven't yet hit. One of the errors I used to have where I used to press enter sometimes, I think, or escape and had, had some weird issues with the editor. So they fixed quite a lot of things with this script editor. And it is really simple once you get your head around it. Devices are D and they're connected to the external stuff. R are just memory, just like memory chips or variables, whatever you want to call them. And we're loading stuff into them. We're transforming them. In fact, let me just see. Yeah, I don't think R00 uh, will work. I just want to actually try that. I haven't actually tried it. Let's just see. Are we set to the motion sensor right now? We're set to the daylight sensor. Let's just change that to the motion sensor. And let me just go back in here and change this to R0. Because uh, this would be technically a knot, but I'm not sure if we can actually do that. If I step away... No, it works fine. It works fine. So, yeah, we don't even need R1. We can just do R0, R0, 0, and it basically flips it between 0 and 1. And then we're storing it back out to the light. So that's all nice and easy, and hopefully that's going to be straightforward. It's not long enough for me to really publish this uh, on GitHub or anything, because it's quite easy for you to type in. I'll leave it on screen right now while I'm talking. So hopefully you can pause the video there and type that in yourself. If it gets longer than this, of course, I'm going to put it down on some kind of GitHub or gist that you can actually copy and paste it in. I'm not putting it into a published library, by the way, because I'm just paying, playing on a personal account, not on my uh, my my YouTube, basically, account, because uh, I bought this game far before I had a separate account. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty good otherwise, and all works. So, yes, automatic lighting is our first sort of option. I'm going to change that back before I forget. Otherwise, that is uh, not going to work. There we go. So nighttime sensing, all good. And then we can just put our cladding back. Um, what did, did I not have any more cladding? Um, oh, maybe I didn't. Okay. Floor grating, you can go back. And I did have a little bit more cladding. I just needed to spray paint this. Unfortunately, if you use a spray paint, it helps if you do this with, uh, basically with um, a lot of, uh, a lot of, stack uh, what's the right wording if you have a maximum size stack before you use the paint on it because it uses the same amount if it's one or if it's 10 so you may as well have 10 so yeah that's quite good and then all we need to do really uh, we can now remove the motion sensor if we wanted to and take this computer away it works perfectly well without the computer there anymore uh, because everything is programmed so yeah they'll turn off during the daytime and that depends whether you've got enough power storage and that's one of the reasons why the battery so hope you enjoyed this episode. If you've got any particular problems coming up that are sort of early game stuff that you want to control by computer that you don't figure, can't figure out how to, or if you've got questions about this, do let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next episode for some more Stationeers. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.